if you don't mind, um, would you be very kind and put your cameras on? Because it's so much nicer for the people reading to feel like they're reading to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Isabella. Um, otherwise, it, I think it feels a little bit like you're speaking and reading into a void. Um, yeah, somebody has known it. Mary Maxwell. Like, Hi, Mary. Thank you. If you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it just makes it a lot nicer for the people who are who are reading to um, to see that there are other people here. Um, so uh, it's so nice to have so many of you here. And I've got on my list that we're going to start with Catherine Higgins Moore. Catherine, are you here? Is she here? I don't see her. Oh, that's a shame. Um, all right, well, look, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna kick you off. <laughs> I'll be your warm up act and um, try and get everybody into the mood. And then we'll, we'll just carry on. Um, and maybe Catherine will, will tune in in the meantime. So I, um, I, I've just moved house, I was saying to Joanna, and I haven't attended as many of the festival um, workshops as I would have liked to. Last year was, was amazing and the program this year looked incredible, but I was packing and unpacking. But I did manage to attend Elizabeth Reader's fabulous workshop on using detail and objects um, in our work to, um, it, and to use them to achieve things like drama and tension. And um, I don't think I achieved that, but I kind of, I ended up going down the road that I often go down, which is a little bit nostalgic. And I sit at my father's old desk and that was on my desk with post-its in it. So this is a little poem um, that I've written about that. Dog-eared, sandwich stained and dirty, Goldberg's paperback book rests on a weathered oak desk. Pink post-its poke out like flags, reminders to go further, dig deeper and try harder. Inspiring her to be the writer within, sitting late at night, composing the bones while wondering if her father used to work underneath the same moon. Crunching numbers, keeping the books while his solid oak desk was swamped by newspapers, magazines, and zigzag samples of colorful cloth. Memories drift away and she picks his silver pen to write down the bones of a dog-eared idea and skeleton paragraphs underneath the same bright moon. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so has Catherine, have we had Catherine turn, um, come back? In which case, Marion, who is in Holland. I've had a little correspondence with Marion. Um, she's originally from Bristol and she's joining us today from Holland. Um, she said the, the stay at home literary festival workshops that inspired her the most were the pleasures of detail, which I, I attended also, um, a poetry workshop, um, Majela Kuyan and Ariana Salafranca and Dare to Write with Naomi Knox, et cetera. Um, she thought that there were many tips and ideas that she enjoyed and she plans to keep playing with them um, in the future. Um, aspects of all four inspired a few writings which she really enjoyed and Naomi Knox also inspired Marion to dare. So now here's Marion reading her new festival inspired poem called Perspective. Over to you, Marion. Thank you, Janet. So, Perspective. Do I carry my perspective as a torch held in front of my eyes as a blinding armor? Does my perspective work as a filter through which all whom I meet must lose meaning? Do I stand on my perspective as a soapbox from which to pontificate on the world? Do I ever really meet another or truly listen to what they say? Do I listen with my eyes, my heart, my skin? Or do I live on an island of my own memory and viewpoint? Can I escape my perspective, my history, my gender, my politics, my genetic? Can I escape my time? Can I climb in a helicopter and rise above myself and see a perspective from above? Can I see as the astronaut sees, 
the vulnerability of this blue princess? Can I feel the perspective of the sun shining its indiscriminate life force on us all? Can I put aside my torch to feel at one with the stars, with the perspective of a million years? To carry a perspective in the now, not carved by the scars of what is no longer relevant. Oh, to put aside my perspective, to actually feel truly integrated and as one, to let, dare to let go, to let go and to let go again. Without my cherished perspective, I can hug the me I long to be. I can let others be as they might be without a blanket blinding me to their inner beauty. Without my perspective, I stand vulnerable, unknown, new. But then without my perspective, there is no need of my armor, only the soft light of humanity. Oh, thank you, Marion. That was lovely. You've got some really nice comments. Um, and Joanna um, commented on one that I really liked also. Can I put aside my torch and be at one with the stars? Stunning. She said, I totally agree. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm really glad that you enjoyed the festival. <laughs> yeah, well, it was great to play around. That was what Naomi was saying, play around and yeah, yeah, no, try things out in this poem of what I was hearing. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming and sharing it with us. Right. Um, and next, Catherine Higgins Moore still hasn't turned up, I don't think. Huh? Um, Tracy Downing, if I could call on you to come. Tracy um, came to the first open mic that we had on the third. Um, she's an artist and art therapist living in Surrey. And she's recently started writing and wrote a book during lockdown. She's been attending the morning meditation writings during the festival um, and came and, and shared some of her work that she'd written during the festival on the 3rd of May salon and absolutely blew us all away. So I'm really happy to welcome her back today. Hi, Tracy. Hi, um, I'm just gonna close the door because- Tracy is on holiday in her conservatory. <laughs> thrilling in the garden. <laughs> yeah, I did just tell him that people can see him walking bare chested past the back of me anyway. Um, I'm going to read uh, something that I just did this morning, actually, in the car after having my second COVID jab, um, because I didn't want to miss Catherine's writing workshop um, on copywriting. I've never done that before. Um, so this is a piece of writing I did um, called 1984, and it's after Otessa Moshfeg. Um, that was the genre that we were looking at. <clears throat> I looked like a girl you'd expect to see on an overground train. Velour patterned seats, worn smooth in patches, flicking through some generic magazine. Shiny cover, dull edged, an avoidance prop in case of train talkers. My hair unbrushed, you might have taken me to be a student, the kind who is friendless and unsure of her subject. Note the bitten down nails with remnants of red. Polish? knee jiggling, unsettled. I looked like nothing out of the ordinary. It is easy for me to imagine this girl, an awkward young version of myself, a battered rucksack slumped beside her, a corrugated takeaway tea in her hands, tracing the lines on the cardboard an echo of the beating railway tracks. Then picking at the ragged magazine pages, not paying attention to anything in particular, a kind of mid-stare glaze over her eyes. I could have looked stylish if I'd bothered, but I was ambivalent about appearance, almost half trying to be something, someone that passed as unusual or original. At 17, you might have expected me to know about music, film, who's who, to follow celebrities in fashion. I detested most people, they bored me almost as much as I bored myself. So, yeah. Thank you, that was lovely. And you just wrote that 
this morning while you were in the car. <laughs> I think we're going to be hearing a lot more from you. <laughs> Have I got a moment to read one of my poems from my book? It's a yes, short please. Book. Yes. yes. So I wrote this book, Moments in Mind, um, last last year. I've only just started been writing a year, really. Um, and some of them are, they're kind of dedicated to our NHS um, workers. So um, I've illustrated it. So there's a picture I did of it. So this one is called Chance. And I'll just read this one and then I'll go. Chance. The birds have no words, just song not seeming to know what's wrong. Outside it's so quiet. The occasional flight of a plane, not a bird is heard. The ticking of my clock, making me take stock of all I have and hold. So far I am a lucky one, today I'm feeling fine, but then one just can't tell how long that will last. My thoughts are interrupted by the siren of another ambulance. Thank you. Thank you. That um, that resonates with me a lot. That, that uh, how uh, hearing an airplane, seeing an airplane flying overhead instead of being this constant thing that we're used to became an occasional, like special occasion. And how eerie an ambulance. Everything was so quiet that hearing an ambulance go by was really very eerie. And thank you so much for sharing more of your work with us and for coming today. Um, just flick back to my list. Isabella Oswald um, is joining us. Is she here? Isabella, are you here? Mm -hmm. She is going to join in. Hi, Isabella. You're in Vienna. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And um, so um, English is my second language, but I guess it's... Uh, oh, I lost a document I wanted to read from. Uh, and you've been attending KK's morning meditations? Yeah, mostly. And I was also in the workshop... Um, um, like in the same workshop of, I forgot her name, who just read. And my text also has um, like someone with a backpack. It was just funny to hear the same words uh, from another <laughs> person. Um, so I, I have a from the meditation workshop. Um, it's after a po poem by Juan Philip Felipe Herrera and called um, Here and There. And we had the exercise of um, turning the text around, like writing it and then writing it backwards and then creating something new. So this is my text here. T there and here, you and I, you are, there, I am, here, distance between the two of us, a brown reddish gap. Somehow things might be this way, tempting to be there, and longing you to be here, overcoming, coming over, lines between the two of us, infinity, overcoming the gap, overcoming with joy. Joy wants to be expressed. The first drop of ink here on this paper for you, over there, reader. Ink of you, ink of joy, auto writing fountain pen creating words without intermission in connection with you, the you over there. I sit and meditate with you over there. I am here. I, I aim to be here. I am to be with you, with you over there. There you are. That's it. That's lovely. It has a really lovely rhythm. And also I, I live in Spain um, and I'm pretty fluent in Spanish, but bravo, I hats off to writing in your second language. I think that's really a huge achievement in and of itself. Yeah. Plus it was a beautiful poem. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. What I wanted to do um, is like, you know, I, I cut the lines and um, so you could read it the one way or the other, like you, you can b combine the different, oh. if you see it, it looks different and then you can read it the one way or the other way. So, oh, that's really nice. Clever, yeah. fun. I, I also have the text of this morning, but um, I, I guess there's some more people who want to read. So, but I just have to Well, why don't we keep, uh, do you want to read one more? We have time. 
I've had, I think one or two people dropped out. So there are a few extra minutes if you'd like to read something else. Maybe it's interesting to hear another version of the morning. Of yeah, the morning. lovely. Um, okay. Um, okay, I um, no, I have it somewhere else. One second, I need to look for it. Um, maybe somebody else. Um, yeah, and then you can have a look and we'll come back to you. Look for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the feedback. It's a pleasure. Um, next up, Claire Lavery. Claire, are you there? She's there. I can see her. Um, I've unmuted myself. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, hi there. So Claire's, hi. Claire's written a poem during a poetry session on the theme of being thankful. And you yes. said you also have a witch spell poem to the yes. goddess of Bridget. I think. They're both quite short. Um, Fantastic. The, Let's the, hear them the, both. The first was from the poetry workshop with Nadine Asha Jassat, mm -hmm. um, which was the Thank You for Small Things workshop. Oh, out lovely. of which I out of which I got two poems actually, but I read one of those, which um, we did the first exercise. I highly recommend it actually for working with people in support and therapy. We had to make a list of things we were thankful for, and then next to them in the next column, write descriptions of those things. Um, so I took my room and the place I'm in, uh, which is looking onto my garden and my watercolors, because I actually. Um, self-isolated here and I've not moved out of it so I'm sort of living in my study and I took everything from the walls and from what I can see out the window so um, I'll just put you down so I can read my words okay thankful I'm thankful for long stems cupped petals bursting bell-shaped mouths thrust open by nocturnal watering I'm thankful for the intensity of colours springing wild from my window, nature's gifts, unexpected showings in pots, delicate clusters, mellow in the half light of morning. Hang on. I'm grateful for watercolours, their movements on my walls, framed olive brush strokes of grass, hunchback hills hugging far horizons, larches tall, wind blowing, blowing low the tall trunks, bending against dry stone walls, leaves waiting to fall. I'm thankful for wide skies of border country. My eyes follow the dashing clouds. I enter them softly as I write at my desk, each painting a hymn to my wanderings, the places we visited, the maps our lives left. I'm grateful for this keyboard, playing lush as a piano, knee deep in the high grass of meadows, pausing by borders of fields in flower, rapeseed or wheat, trees in full blooming, words on my page, visiting the heather on moors of my making. So that is my poem that I wrote in the workshop. Um, lovely. You've had, I've really enjoyed it. And there are some nice comments, which you won't have been able to. No, I can't um, say. Have a look at, but um, it, even you read beautifully. It's very um, evocative. The thank way, you. The way you read. No, thank you. And will you read your, your. Um, my second poem, um, one bit of background. Um, I'm of uh, Irish descent. Um, uh I'm actually decided to read it, not just because of the witches, but because last week we got the Domestic Violence Act. I, a lot of my poetry is for people in situations of domestic violence or going through the court systems. But at one point I diverged into pagan goddesses thinking of inspiration, not just feminist figures. I've also written poems about Josephine Butler. Um, in fact, the room I'm sitting in was the old post office in Corbridge where she would have posted her letters into my wall. So I wrote a poem about that. Um, but this is St. Bridget. I think everyone who is Catholic has got a Bridget in their families. But when I looked into the goddess Bridget, I saw that she was the goddess of poetry and hearth. So the goddess that protected the family and the home. So I've chosen to write this because this is the voice of a mother um, 
uh, inspired by Bridget, the pagan goddess, to protect her hearth from um, a predator um, within the home. So it's called Wand Spell. I also did a tiny bit of research when I did this poem, and I even chose the, the, the tree from which the wand should be made. Thank you, J.K. Rowling, for that, because I went on her we website and looked at all the different woods for wands, as poets do. One spell, you were allergic to hazelnuts. Lips swelling at skin's touch, reddened, repelled, wounded in their eating. Let me fashion a hazel wand. Wood of wisdom, sharp token, ancestral Irish protection. It will bring you a storm in its divining. It will soothe the soul, cleanse all hurts. Let me use this wand, trace a circle in the woods, surround myself with its coppice force field as a protection against evil spirits of ancient times. Let me repel you with nesting night jars. Then adorn my hair with apple blossoms, unlock secrets to a longer life, waiting for you in nature's canopy. You will come, protected by the white rod of Ireland, as catkins sway from the canopy of branches. They promise warmer times ahead. Hazelnuts will be their springtime gift when you arrive. Let these coppice trees ignite, charge the air, electric to your approach. Remember, I am with Bridget, ancient Celtic wand maker, goddess of forge and hearth. She gives me her inspiration, draws connection to a female warrior past, and I too can bend these hazel branches as she whistles her poem to the nightingales. Thank you. Thank you. That was lovely. Look, you've got lots of virtual applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you just, so much. I'm just really choose, glad that you... choose, choose your wand based on, well, my ex-partner was allergic to hazelnuts. <laughs> choose your <laughs> wand. <laughs> Depending on the Which person, oh, I did, there's a lot of research behind this little ditty. But I'm pleased I've been able to do it publicly because sometimes we write these things for ourselves. Is that the first time you've read that in public? Yes, yes. I mean, I have poetry published in books. Um, 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 usually for fundraising I'm putting together also uh, an anthology uh, but um, and I use a lot of poems um, in activism uh, but some poems are really sort of a form of self-therapy really <laughs> and this was one of them I started going down that route of looking at um, ancient folklore in relation to it's quite mesmerizing uh, and it yes. you know it does feel quite personal and yet there's a sense of playfulness in there as well yeah. um, but it was really weird I, I chanced upon also after writing this a year or so after writing it her story website which is a campaign in Ireland and saw that they were campaigning for St Bridget to there to be a St Bridget's Day like there is a St Patrick's Day I mm -hmm. didn't know that and they were using um, St Bridget the pit the not not just the the catholic um saint but also the pagan goddess as a symbol of um female empowerment so i thought oh my god i was on the right track there because yeah, i I'd, I'd seen these gorgeous images of of bridget the goddess the pagan goddess online and that's where it started and then i started looking at ones i spent ages looking at jk rowling's ones for harry potter and then they both came together and I've got my little spell. I remember actually being fascinated by, well, fascinated. I just, I loved that part of her, of her books with the, yes. the one and the one choosing the person that sort of played. And the, the, the and detail the that she must have gone into to, yeah, to think that all up. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for coming and for, for. A bit last minute. But... <laughs> really entertaining reading. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, oh, it was fantastic. Um, so next up, we've got Fran Hill, who I believe, um, I don't have um, any info. So you just start talking, Fran. Tell us what you're going to read. Okay. Um, I've been really inspired by um, the novel novelists that I've been um, looking at and watching in the festival because um, I'm in the middle of writing one and just anything about keeping going has been really inspiring and, and it's being quite confident difficult in your to own keep voice. going and, and um, keep that momentum. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's been so encouraging. So um, I, I, last year I published a book, which is um, a teacher memoir, a memoir of a, of a year in my life as a teacher. Um, but this would be um, my first novel um, if it ever gets published. But anyway, this is one. Um, one down. Yeah, one down. <laughs> so um, what I'm writing is um, a novel about a girl called Jackie in 1976. And she's 14 and she needs a new foster home. Um, and the new foster home is not going to be what it should be. That's uh, basically, I think, what's going on. And um, just at the beginning of the novel... I'm introducing ideas about why she needs the new foster home. So this is Jackie. I could see from outside the house that dad hadn't opened the front room curtains. So even though a perfectly decent spring sun nosed at the windows, it hadn't been invited in. I put my key in the door, then listened before I stepped into the hall, bending to pick up posts dad hadn't bothered with. His size 11 shoe print had marked the brown envelopes. So he'd been out then, no need to wonder where. Envelopes with windows, the ones he hated most. I often had to rescue them from the bin and iron them hard with my hands in case he was making things worse for himself and for me. Dad, I called, hanging my blazer on the banister. Aileen, who sat next to me in English, had told me that when she came home from school, she could hear her dad yelling while she was still four or five doors away. Yelling about what, I said. How long have you got, she said. But Mrs Collingworth said, stop chatting or we'd be kept in at break and were we boring her? Which would be better, I asked myself then. A yelling dad or a silent dad, temporarily poleaxed by whiskey. Silent in the way a gas attack is silent until it snaps at your lungs. I peered round the door of the front room where, alongside the two armchairs, the coffee table and telly, he'd recently manoeuvred in the bed he used to share with mum. The room stank, the kind of smell you get when you've left washing fermenting in a basket for three days. Dad was face down on the bed, his bulky frame vanquished by the drink, so on his face and off his face at the same time. He had his shirt on but no trousers only grey Y-fronts, the usual late afternoon uniform. At first I thought he was awake, but then he snored suddenly like an engine being revved. The customary glass sat stickily on the table beside the customary bottle, with an inch of whiskey left in it. That would be his first request then once he woke up, and I'd be at the off-licence begging for credit, trying to pretend I was 16. I left the front room and went in the kitchen. I had English homework to do and perhaps half an hour's peace in which to do it. I sat at the tiny drop leaf table with a plastic cup of orange squash and two cream crackers spread with, spread with blue band margarine, writing a composition with the title A Day at the Seaside. We were studying literature about places in English. My story probably wasn't what Mrs Collingworth was expecting, a little boy getting buried in sand by his sisters and then forgetting about him while they paddled, but... Some days you're just not in the mood, are you, for ice creams and donkey rides? The parents had just discovered that the raised shape in the bright and sand was their son when Dad woke up and announced his return to the land of the conscious by lobbing a bottle at the tiled fireplace. I scrabbled underneath the sink for the brush and dustpan. Dustpan, but no brush. That's the story of your life, girl, I said to myself. Dustpan, but no brush. Chips but no fish. Dad, but no mum. Bed, but no rest. Crackers, but no cheese. And even the blue band was suspect. Later, when I came back from the off-licence with two bottles of whiskey, Dad poured a full glass and drank it all down. 
Doesn't that burn your throat, Dad? I said. Sometimes, he said, but it's a good burning. He said it through a cough, though, so he'd never have made it in advertising. That's it. Thank you. Oh, wow. It's quite powerful. You've got fantastic comments in the, in the chat um, on and off his face at the same time um, and, and fantastic details. I loved the smell of the laundry basket, but with the with the dirty, yeah, Mary is giving a thumbs up for that one. So what I was wondering is if, had you writ written all of this before the festival or? Well, is this what I'm working on? And so what I, sure. I was wondering if you, if you knew or you could share with us a little bit about what changed, what, um, did you change anything kind of inspired by some of the workshops that you've been to? I think it's... I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it's that sense of confidence just keeping going because mm. um, just lately I've just felt like, you know, maybe this isn't, a, you know, it's such a long haul to, to write a whole novel and you don't even know whether anything's going to ever happen with it. So um, I think it's just the confidence to keep going. And I was listening especially to the writers of Boys Don't Cry and the um, the one about the pandemic. I can't remember the title. The Something of Men, I think it is. Does anybody remember the name of that one? I didn't attend that one. You can write it. In, oh, um, Mary says Fiona Scarlett. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. And yeah. that was just so encouraging the because they man. just, yeah, they just kept going with their novels, even though I think one's a full-time lawyer, the other's a full-time primary teacher. And I was just thinking, come on, girl, <laughs> <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> so, yeah, really encouraged. Oh, well done. That's brilliant. Um, somebody says, um, can you let us know the name of your memoir? Okay, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Thanks. Thanks so much. It was Thank lovely you. to hear from you. Mary says, Fran, it's really gripping and engaging um, and full of much authenticity. Please keep at it. Yeah, I think to keep at it. <laughs> oh, Thank you so much. It's lovely to meet you. Um, next up. Um, have I missed anyone? Would any is there anybody who's inspired to share something that maybe didn't sign up and would like to? Otherwise, Joanna was going to. Um, oh, sorry. Um, Mari says she couldn't spell. I'm not sure what the spelling mistake was. <laughs> anyway, you can correct us, Mari. Um, Joanna, you were going to read something that you've written before. Yes. Oh, um, and also, um, sorry, my voice is going a little bit after presenting quite so many sessions after the last two weeks. Um, but Carly's also going to read one after me, if that's all right. Fantastic. That's great. Great. Right. I shall spotlight myself. Okay. So the things that I'm going to read today haven't been written during the festival because I've been on tech support for most of uh, the last two weeks. But um so I'm a, I'm a poet primarily, although uh, my MA was actually in non-fiction memoir writing. And I have a poetry pamphlet coming out in, I think it'll be about January, February um, time next year. So I'm going to read a poem which came out on I Am Poetry about March. So yeah, two months ago now. And it's called Delicious. She drops the word into conversation, sprawling and red like unfurling fire lilies. The audacity of it makes me stutter and she, comfortable and languid limbed, moves on to the next topic as if she hasn't just released the scent of raspberries and honeysuckle into a rainy afternoon catch up. Afterwards, I wonder if I've just seen a glimpse of the world as she sees it, life, in all its mundanities rippling across her taste buds, simply delicious. I find myself mouthing the word, reveling in the sibilance, so petal soft, it burns. So that's my, um, that's one of the poems that will be in my first pamphlet. And let me just think, I have a couple that I'm thinking of reading, but I'm not quite sure which one I'm gonna go for. I think, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do three. I'm going to do one, which is a bit sad. 
And then I'm going to do one which is a bit more strange, I think. I will just, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So the second one is called Look at Me, and it was published in Atrium Poetry uh, in September 2019. Look at me. Before you leave, you must know the shape of the orchid, the narrow rod of stem, itself held up by a green plastic pole, too fragile to support the glut of blooms billowing at the head. Before you leave, you must know that four months ago, the plant was a barren knot of stumps. Blanched in the white windowsill sun, it leaned against the guide pole, unmoving for an entire winter. Before you leave, you must know that when spring came, I reached to wipe the dust from its leaves and discovered a bud, a knuckle of a thing, tiny, barely a suggestion of green. You must know that I thought of you when more buds opened and opened and opened. I thought of how thrilled you'd have been of the shock of cerise in each center, like the bright silk lining of a dull coat. Okay. That was lovely. I love the um, the knuckle image for the little bud starting on the orchid. That was lovely. And somebody else has said bright silk lining of a dull coat. It's beautiful. Carly said that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're Thank reading you three. Okay, I've got my last one, which is in Tears in the Fence, issue 72, which is another flower-based one. And I didn't realize until I decided to figure out what I was reading that flowers appear quite so much in my work. Um, but this one is called On Rediscovering a Favourite Dress, and it was published in May 2020. Every so often, clash comes back in fashion too close. Scarlet against primrose, aqua against teal. Now we pilgrim the chalk tracks, learn the revolving cartography of village windows, forlorn glances, disapproving gazes, an absence or deluge of applause. Facebook posts implore nuance, ask, who are these enemies in our manners? We examine the pathways cultivated borders and soften at peonies in cerise, mingling with burnt umber of red helianthus. That too was a choice. Behind hedgerows, I hear a woman tell her child to stop flicking beetles from the magnolia. It takes a moment to understand a system of rebirth. It takes an opening. That is to say, the warmth of you sitting beside me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> did you study at Glasgow, John? I did not, no, I studied at um, Bass Bar. Uh, and that's how you got involved in the festival? Yes, yeah. So yeah. I was um, the engagement manager for Paper Nations, which I technically still am. I'm just on secondment, so I can come and do this. And then I oh, fantastic. Oh, they're lucky to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Carly, were you going to read something next? Yes. I, hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. I certainly hi, hi. can. Yes. Um, Thank you. It's, it's really such a delight to see all of these names and these people reading because so many of, of you have seen at so many events. So it's just wonderful to kind of put a face to a name and to also hear your beautiful work as well. So that's just been super special. Um, I, like Joanna, have been moderating the tech for a lot of the events, so I haven't really been um, writing so much during during the festival, although little seeds of ideas have kind of bloomed that maybe I'll, I'll develop later. But what I was going to read was a couple of um, poems, short poems from my poetry pamphlet. My pamphlet's called Anastasia, Look in the Mirror. And this pamphlet came out last year with um, a Scottish press called Stuart Rhubarb Press. I, I'm a poet based in, in Edinburgh, as well as a, a children's picture book writer as well. And I, I did go to, to Glasgow. I, I got my PhD at, um, at Glasgow Uni, and that's where 
I met Carolyn and kind of how I got got involved in the festivals through her. So I'm absolutely happy to be here. And, and yes, I'll share a couple of couple of poems. So a lot of the poems in this book were inspired by the lives and works of the Scottish colorist painters. I don't know if any of you are familiar with them, but they're this group of kind of post-impressionist painters that lived in the early 1900s. And they made these really beautiful, gorgeous, colorful uh, works of art. And a a lot of the paintings are yay someone says I love the Scottish colorists in the in the chat that's wonderful me too and so a lot of the poems in here were kind of inspired by by their lives and their their works so this first one is in the voice of one of those painters called Samuel Peplow so this is in the voice of Samuel Peplow who lived from 1871 to 1935 and the poem is called these things these things my father taught me boxes, these wooden shells for copper, silk ties, wedding rings. He taught me keys with jagged teeth to pry them open. This is where you find the family documents, certificates, silver jewelry. This is the bank where I keep things safe. These are square chimneys and windows. These things work like roads and grids and ledgers to keep us from falling in the North Sea. These are the carefully drawn boundaries of Princess Street. But I like the wines, loose cobbles smeared with rainwater, droplets racing down the window and swallowing each other. The first time I saw Amsterdam, liquid sloshing on pavements, pavements sinking into liquid. I told my father tulips rang out yellow and I bought a Franz Halls and chocolates and fried potatoes. And when I left, my suitcase was so full, it would not shut. So that's that poem. And then I was gonna share two other uh, poems as well that were also inspired by the, the Scottish colorists too. So this next one um, is called French and it's inspired by a painting in particular by Samuel Peplow called Luxembourg Gardens uh, from 1910. And it's called French. French. French purrs like a white cat in the sun window and rasps like cigarette throats after boozy nightclubs, a language of audacity and elegance. We learned early how to conjugate, adding E, Z, and E depending on the subject, tacking endings onto verbs like hats. Ask me anything. Is the Louvre nearby? Oui. Descendez cette rue et toi. I will drop words in your palm like chocolat. We can spend all day with our mouths around vowels, tossing R's off our tongues in bursts of sweet air. But when they took me to the Jardin de Tuileries, nobody asked me for my words. I held them in the folds of my English skirt, gazing up at flamboyant trees, the grass lit with flowers and everything swaying, no firm edges like the language. I wanted to speak. So I'll share one more poem as well. And this is actually the last poem uh, from the pamphlet and it's inspired by an, a different painting um, by another of the Scottish colorist painters. And this one is called, um, the painting is called Iona Croft and uh, the painter is Francis Cadell and the paintings from 1925. And all these paintings are really beautiful. I, I really, really like their art. And so, yeah, this one's called The House. Um, the house. Somehow the sun melted onto the roof, cracked open like an egg, and all its juices ran down the sides of the white house on Iona, dripping and sliding in avalanches of color. All the roofs were blue, but this one, with its melody of falling reds, seeping browns, and blurring tans. See me by the pink waterfall haystack, my legs pressed against the grass, wondering who decided to unstop the bottle and pour it onto that little white house. And if inside the colors fall on all the furniture, the roof leaking red and yellow, splattering the floorboards with strange brightness like eyes adjusting to light, making chairs sing orange and pink high notes. 
I fall asleep and dream of who lives there. Maybe their lives are fresh as new paint, cold and wet and slippery to touch in that little white house where nothing ever settles and nothing ever hardens. Thanks for listening. I'll, I'll Thank pop you, the... Carly. <laughs> well, your reading's infectious. You look like you're having a great time. And I think that extent, that kind of passes on to all of us who I think are all really enjoying hearing your reading. Oh, thank you so um, much. The one about French and being the Jardin de Tudier, I think resonated with a lot of us. And it reminded me a little bit of Angela Carter's retelling of Puss in Boots, where he says, you can only purr in French. It's the only <laughs> language you can purr in. Oh, I love that. I haven't it's even fantastic. heard that. That's wonderful. Oh, fantastic. I read it and I cracked it. I was like, yes, of course, that's the only language you can purr properly. In. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Thank you. And a couple, um, you. Tracy was saying um, about writing to painting, she's interested in writing it as if her paintings are having conversations with the poetry. And that kind of makes me think of, we should have a conversation about ekphrasis. <laughs> that sort of response between the two. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thanks so I, much. Have I missed anyone who would, I think Rufus would like to read? Um, I'm not sure where. We Hello, hi. Hi, 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 thank you. I'm so glad I managed to catch this because uh, I was in between making dinner for the girls, but I'd like to say thank you so much for the festival. It really has been an anchor for me the last couple of weeks and I've had, I've got so much out of it and it's really, really held me. So thank you so much. But um, these are all of uh, pieces I've written throughout the festival. So I'll, I'll power you through them. Um, Stop me if I'm if I'm uh, going over time. So this was a from the Beat uh, Dub Poetry Workshop. We are way silence at the centre of the beyond blind rogue reporter. Men with dutiful daughters who become women next in line for the slaughter. Genocide of gender. Boys club of keen contenders ready to do their worst. I am done with bending, my back is broken, they report on murder but stay softly spoken, feds roll out new agendas but this is just token, bullied bruise, brave blues, rip up the old school rules, women's welfare is broken. Uh, and this next piece was written at <clears throat> the uh, Right and Happiness workshop, it's called Ironing. Don't think, just do, whack on, line of duty or BBC iPlayer reminds me of the old days when the omnibus used to sue the Sunday. I can be present with my girls, but they just do their own thing in play. I scorch my love into their uniforms, getting ready for the week ahead rather than being uh, rushed, rushed mornings in a hand to mouth situation, day to day, perfect planning, cutting through creases, keeping the utility room ship shape, fairy fabrics, double denims, rainbows and ribbons, rig outs ready for the better, brighter day planning for summer holidays bag up the hand-me-downs for friends of littler girls these treasures too good to just throw away they say that cleanliness is next to godliness I say that ironing reconnects me to breath keeps the blame train at bay I loop it's gonna be okay I iron to say I love you to keep my mind fine this is my mantra my soul food this is how I honor us every Sunday um and this one was from, I think, uh, another happiness, writing for happiness uh, workshop. Uh, I'm mega obsessed with dandelions right now. Dan to show in Welsh, which gives them a bit more raw. I keep the garden tidy, but nothing grew last year except for a trampoline and little girls losing their curls. 
Alice dug up all my sunflowers, but the dandelions, bright and bold, brilliant, resilient. I hear they're good for the bees. I like the colour anyway. This year, they remind me how far we've come, a marker of the journey we've been on, the things we've survived, the bouquets my girls gifted me, peels me out of the plague, pulls me out of the plague. And every spring, I'll be waiting for their return, for them to pull me back into my body. Um, and uh, oh, this, uh, and maybe if, if I've got time to share uh, one more, um, this was from the Day to Write workshop, which was, I feel so blessed that these have all been av available to me and free. Um, the things I didn't know I loved. I didn't know how much I loved dandelions, my new markers, the biggest blessings of spring, survival, together we turned trauma, tribal. I didn't know how much I loved books, especially the sad ones, the ones I am yet to read, the ones I will write. I didn't know how much I love dog hair, how blessed I feel finding the remains in skirt tins. I didn't know how much I love Pritt stick, how it perfectly patchworks, collage reconnecting me to self. I didn't know how much I loved lavender and ylang ylang and how it always knows what to do. I didn't know how much I love the birds, their committed choir, they sing in the sun and call me to prayer. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Rufus. That was great. Good fun. Um, I'm glad you you got a lot out of the festival, I guess, by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much. And I actually have a book drop in uh, this month uh, called Flashbacks and Flowers, published by Indigo Dreams. So I just thought I'd throw in a ruthless plug there. Um, oh. And I'm not quite I'm not quite sure how I got here, actually, uh, but we've we've done it. So um, well, well done and congratulations on having yeah. your book coming out. That's great. So yeah, thank you. So all, all, all the mothers keep keep writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. We've only got two minutes left. I was hoping we could get um, a couple of more people in, but I I think we're probably going to have to wrap it up um, there. But thank you. It's been so nice to hear from all of you um, and. Especially the well, it's been nice meeting some new people. It's always nice meeting new people at these um, festivals, and this one has been really, really great. Um, so Joanna, do you have anything else to to? No, just um, thank you all for your continued support and creativity, and um, for coming to so many sessions and being a part of this community. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. It was lovely to hear some of your work too. <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks so much, everyone. And um, well, if not, hopefully see you next year, if not before. <laughs> Great, lovely. I'm going to end the session here, but um, you can probably catch up with quite a lot of us on Twitter. So uh, 